Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat, mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, at mga nanonood po nitong uh, Prayer Watch series po natin ngayong Thursday night. Ano nga po, Panginoon ay patuloy tayong iniingatan at sa ating pong paghanap o uh, pag nanais natin na makatagpo natin ng Panginoon at gamitin tayo sa pananalangin. Ito po ang ministry ng Gospel of Grace upang tayo po ay maging bahagi po para po manalangin po para sa ating bansa at para sa kanyang iglesia. Ngayong gabi ito po ay buksan po natin ang ating mga Biblia sa Psalm 51 uh, reading, we will be reading verses 15 to 17 Ang sabi po dito, O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise for you will not delight in sacrifice or I would give it you will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken spirit and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. And the pong salmo na ito ay sinulat po ni David nung po siya ay, after po siyang nag, nagkaroon ng uh, pagkakasala sa Panginoon. Ano po yung pagkakasala niya? He committed adultery and he committed uh, also murder and kung titingnan po natin yung binasa po nating mga verses alam po ni David na ang Panginoon ay hindi po siya hindi po ang Panginoon na please sa offering sa ritual offering na uh, hindi po malinis ang puso ng taong nag-offer sa Panginoon ano po ang sinasabi ni David dito ang, ang sinabi niya po sa verse 17 Ano yung katanggap-tanggap sa Panginoon? Ano yung kalugod-lugod sa Panginoon na, na offering? A broken spirit and a contrite heart. Ano po ba ibig sabihin nito? A repentant heart. Ano po yung pong nagpapakumbaba po sa Panginoon? Na inaamin niya na siya ay nag, may, may pagkakasala at nagpapakumbaba sa Panginoon na siya ay patawarin sa mga kasalanan na ito. Um, na ang sinasabi rin po dito ng isang tao na nagbibigay ng o pagsusibis sa Panginoon o nag-o-offer ng anumang bagay sa Panginoon ang Panginoon hindi nalulugod kung hindi po malinis ang puso niya sa harapan ng Panginoon So humility is very very important whenever we would serve, whenever we would offer our praise to the Lord uh, because God is opposed to the proud but He gives grace to the humble at kung tayo po ay magpapakubaba po at lalapit po tayo sa Panginoon at tayo po ay i-confess po natin sa kanya ang aning kasalanan, ang Panginoon po ay tatanggapin ang ating pong niyaalay na papuri o kung ano man pong binibigay natin para sa po sa Panginoon. God delights in praise that comes from a heart that is humble and repentant before Him. A broken spirit and a contrite heart God will not despise. Ang Panginoon po ay worthy. He is worthy of our praise every day at all times. That's why we, how, papaano po tayo nalapit sa Panginoon every day, tayo po mga kapatid ay dapat magpukumbaba sa Panginoon sa bawat araw sa ating pong paglapit po sa Kanya upang tayo po ay makapagbigay ng papuri po na kalugod-lugod sa Panginoon. At ang alam naman po natin ang ating mga puso ay ano po ay nais maglayag, no? Maglayag ibig sabihin lumalayo tayo sa Panginoon. Yung, yung puso po natin ay by default ay talagang lumalayo sa Panginoon. Kaya po sa araw-araw nating paglapit po sa Panginoon, tayo po ay ipanalangin po para atin natin na tayo po ay lumakad na ayon po sa kanyang kalooban na ang Panginoon ay ating hahanapin tayo po ay patuloy na magpakumbaba po sa kanyang harapan. Tayo po ay aawit sa Panginoon, ang isang awiting na parang panalangin sa Panginoon na ang tayo ay um, magkaroon ng pusong nagpapakumbaba sa kanya at ang panalangin din po ng awiting na ito ay ang ating mga puso ay isecure ng Panginoon sapagkat tayo ay madaling maligaw sa mundong ito. Tayo po ay lumapit po sa Panginoon. Lord, 
Lord, kami po ay lumalapit po sa inyo sa gabi pong ito. Siyasate niyo po ang aming mga puso, Panginoon. Tulungan niyo po kami na makita po namin ang aming mga sarili. Kung paano niyo kami nakikita, Panginoon, sa pagkakataon ito. Nalalaman niyo po ang nilalaman ng aming mga puso, Panginoon. Nilalaman ng aming mga isipan. At kung kami nga po, Panginoon, ay may pagkakasala po sa inyo, Panginoon. Kami po ay lumalapit sa inyo, Panginoon, upang kami po yung patawarin, Panginoon Diyos. At sa pamamagitan ng awitin na ito, Panginoon, ito ay aalay namin po sa inyo na may um, desire upang kami po lamang ay maging katanggap-tanggap, Panginoon, sa inyong harapan. Lord, truly, Lord, a uh, broken spirit and a contrite heart, you will not despise. So, Panginoon, upang hanapin lamang po namin, Panginoon, 
ang iyong kalaoban po para po sa amin, Panginoon. At naisin lamang po namin na kami po ay sumunod po sa inyo. Patawarin niyo po kami, Panginoon, sa aming mga kasalanan. Sapagkat ang mundo nito, Panginoon, ay naakit kami parati, Panginoon, na makalimutan namin kayo, O Lord. At dalangin lamang po namin na you will work, O Lord, in our, in our hearts tonight. And we thank you, Lord, that you are working in our hearts right at this moment, Lord. Salamat po, Panginoon. We entrust to you everything, O God. Sa kapakaginig po namin ang iyong salita, kayo po ang kumilos at sa pananalangin po namin mamaya. Purihin po kayo, Panginoon. Ito po ang aming dalangin sa pangalan po na aming Panginoon Yesus. Amen. Isutuloy, itutuloy po natin, mga kapatid, ngayon pong gabi, ang uh, Armor of God. At ngayon pong gabi ay ating pong pag-aaralan ang Shield of Faith. Po. So, basahin ko po muli sa inyo ang um, Ephesians chapter 6, sabi po sa verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth. This is the belt of truth. And having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Ito po yung in examine natin last Tuesday, which are the shoes of the gospel of peace. In verse 16, in addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. There are two other verses no, na iti-take up natin after po natin ma-cover tong armor of God after itong verse 17. So that would be verses 18 and 19 and they all uh, they both pertain those two verses pertain to the importance of prayer. Okay? Now, so tingnan po natin itong uh, shield of faith. Ano po bang ibig sabihin ng shield of faith? Mga kapatid, for us to live victorious life, no? Faith in itself is not the the it, it is not the key to winning victories, all right? Faith in itself. Why did I say it's not in itself? Because a lot of people would profess na meron naman silang faith, meron silang pananampalataya. Kaya lang oftentimes yung faith na yun, it's it's only positive thinking, no? And hindi talaga siya uh, focused or hindi talaga siya naka-anchor kay Cristo Jesus. It is not faith on uh, on things that we do not know. It has to be faith on the person and the character of the Lord Jesus Christ, no? On the person and the character of the triune God, no? So in Hebrews chapter 12, it ver it in verse 2, it says that the author and the perfecter of our faith is Christ. My dear friends, faith in the only one who is stronger than our enemy. No? Faith in the only one who is stronger in the enemy is what we need. And that person who is stronger, no? ultimately, infinitely powerful than the enemy is our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have to fix our eyes on the Lord, no? We have to, we have to anchor our faith upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews says, sabi po dito, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. 
the battle is like to a race, all right? It's like to a race, no? Uh, ang buhay po ng isang Kristiyano ay ay hindi po tayo sitting pretty, okay? Hindi po tayo uh, pabanjing-banjing o nakarelax, all right? Hindi po ganun eh. Ang buhay po ng isang Kristiyano ay isa pong uh, Warfare, no? It's really, really a battle. Araw-araw po, araw-araw po yan. Bakit po? Bakit po siya battle, no? Bakit siya battle? Kasi meron pong tinatawag na a race that is set before us. Meaning, meron pong pinagdadalhan ang Diyos sa atin na kalooban niya. Ano po? So, tayo po bilang mga anak ng Diyos ngayon ay hindi na po bahagi ng kaharian ng kadiliman, ngunit kaharian na po tayo ngayon ng liwanag. At dahil puro may struggle. No, may struggle araw-araw. Yun yung dahilan kung ba't sabi rito sa Hebrews chapter 12. Because we are surrounded with a great cloud of witnesses, therefore we have to lay aside everything that encumbers us. No, Just like a runner, an athlete who is running in a race, those things that would that would impede, that would hinder us, na makaka uh, magiging balakid dun sa ating pong pagtakbo sa paligsahan. Ano po? Ito po mga bagay na ito ay dapat daw po natin, ano po, i-lay aside. Tanggalin ang mga ito. Ano ito po po? And the sin that so easily entangles, ang kasalanan daw po na madali po makabuhol-buhol sa ating mga paa at hindi po tayo makapagtuloy-tuloy. Because the idea, my dear brothers and sisters, of the Christian life is that it is a race that we need to run. Okay, it's a race that we need to run. Meaning, it is a forward action. No, it is a forward movement. It is a progressive. No, it is a progressive living. No, so hindi po siya yung. No, we just wait for what. Uh, how uh, how things would happen no eh, meron tayong goal no meron tayong meron tayo aim no and what is our aim no our aim is to be transformed into the likeness of our lord jesus our aim is to be fruitful for his glory our aim is that we truly possess and enjoy the spiritual blessings no of the lord that he has given to us now that we are his children no and my dear friends ang kaaway natin lahat gagawin niya no para hindi tayo maka move 1 inch forward do you experience that in your life no na ang daming balakid no dun sa christian life na instead of moving forward so that our lives become uh, fruitful no and that we we experience the joy of our salvation you encounter all sorts no of hindrances all sorts of uh obstacles no ang dami pong no ang dami pong mga uh, sukal dun sa dinadaanan mo no na na hindi smooth yung way no so that is why the enemy will do everything so that you won't no you wouldn't move one inch forward no doon sa ibinigay ng panginoon sa iyo na spiritual inheritance no and friends i believe that uh, this is the real battle no this is the real battle the battle is not in the physical realm the battle my dear friends is in the realm of attitudes it's in the realm of thoughts it's in the realm of ideas that's where the battle truly is the enemy will do everything to derail you, to distract you, to dishearten you. He will do everything necessary to keep you from fo moving forward and taste the abundant life that God has set for us. He will keep you, you know, as I've said a while ago, from possessing and enjoying the spiritual blessings, the spiritual inheritance that God has given you. All right? Now, if he can tempt you, to commit sin, he will do so so that he can destroy you and your faith. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, The devil is likened to a lion. He prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. 
Now, let's look at the shield of faith. No? Let us look at the shield of faith. Why is it? Uh, what is this shield of faith like in, during Roman times? The shield in a Roman soldier's attire is made of wood and it was about two and a half feet wide, all right, two and a half feet wide and four feet long. So, medyo mas mataas ang kaunti sa bewang po natin, ano, at medyo ma malapad siya. Hence, Paul used the phrase in addition to all this. So, ginamit ni Paul yung in addition to all this, no? So, kumbaga, bakit po ganun, ano? It, because the purpose of the shield of faith is to protect the other pieces of the armor. In other words, yung tinatawag na kalasag or shield of faith, mga kapatid, ito po yung first line of defense ng isa pong sundalo. No? It is the first line of defense ng isang sundalo. The shield was usually made of light wood or a rim of brass and covered with several folds or thicknesses of stout hide. Tapos po, sabi doon, yung daw shield na yon, it is preserved by frequent anointing. Ibig sabihin, it is always always polished smooth or anointed with oil so that the arrows or darts would glance off or rebound. No? And what is the purpose no, of this spiritual shield of faith? In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, it tells us why we need the shield. Because it is with the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Uh, yung pong mga palaso na ito ay merong apoy sa dulo. No? Kasi ang sabi, you can extinguish. So it's not just a mere arrow or dart. No? It, has, it is flaming no? at its end. And the Bible says that using this shield of faith, using this shield of faith, those flaming arrows can be extinguished. Now, let me explain a little further no, what Roman arrows were like uh, in ancient times. Sabi po rito, the archers would soak the tips of their darts and arrows in poison so that if the arrow didn't kill the victim, the poison would do its job. Okay? So, the tip of the arrow is uh, the tip of the arrow is soaked in poison. So just in case tamaan ka nung, nung flaming arrow, nung, o nung arrow na yun, ano? Uh, just in case tamaan ka nung arrow na yun at hindi ka naman, uh, di naman siya uh, lethal. Pero dahil soaked sa poison yung arrow na yun, ano? So merong iiwanan yun na lason dun sa katawan mo. Ano? At hindi po ba ganyan ang style ng kaaway? No? Ang style ng kaaway, no? uh, meron, meron siyang uh, ibabato sa atin ano, ng mga flaming arrows, ng mga idea, no? ng mga ideas. No? And di natin napansin, meron na palang natanim sa isip at puso po natin na lason. Alam nyo po yun. At kailangan po talagang i-purge yun. No? Kailangan yung uh, i-confess sa Panginoon no? at ihingi sa Panginoon ng cleansing kasi uh, nananatili yun sa isip at sa imagination po natin and uh, the enemy can use that poison ano po, to, ano, to, to weaken our faith. No? To weaken our faith. On other occasions, Roman soldiers would wrap their arrowheads in cloth, soak them in pitch, and then set them on fire before raining arrows down on the enemy. Those flaming arrows splattered burning pitch wherever they landed and often was setting apart the camp of the enemy. So, ganun pala yun, ano? So, yung, yung arrows na yun, sa dulo nun, merong tinatawag na pitch or tar, alright? And of course, that is flammable. No? So, uh, ayun. When it hits a Roman soldier, no? When it strikes a Roman soldier, that person can be on fire, no? Or, po pwedeng, uh, the place itself, no? Po pwedeng yung place pag nag- kalsika na yung mga tar na yon yung mga pitch na yon pwedeng masunog yung camp nila no so ganito po yung kind of warfare no kind of warfare that Paul wanted us to imagine ano because this was a kind of warfare that was that was being done ano uh, that was occurring during those times no yung panahon po ni Paul now the question now is uh, because we know that 
we don't encounter literal flaming arrows every day. But what we encounter instead are ano po, spiritual flaming arrows. No? Spiritual flaming arrows. Now, let us look at the, the, the scriptures. Kung ano itong mga spiritual flaming ar arrows na ito. Alright. For us to identify the flaming arrows of the devil, we only need to go back to Genesis chapter 3. At dun po sa Genesis chapter 3, alam nyo naman po yun, kung paano po uh, tinempt ni Satan yung si Adam and si Eve, no? particularly si Eve. Now, ano po ang kanyang unang-unang flaming arrow na uh, thin row kay Eve? The first flaming arrow is the flaming arrow of doubt. Okay? The flaming arrow of doubt. If you remember, in his first encounter with man, the devil used the dart of doubt. In John, Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, ang tanong po ng, ni, ni Satan kay Eve ay ito. Did God really say you must not eat from any trees in the garden? What a very subtle way to uh, to plant doubt in the mind of Eve. It was in the form of a question. No, it was in the form of a question. He was not declaring anything. He was just simply uh, creating doubt. What is doubt, my dear friends? Doubt uh, po, is beginning to have it is when you have uncertainty okay it is when you have uncertainty no yung sa tagalog po ang ibig sabihin ng doubt ay meron kang uh, pag-aagam-agam no na pag wala kang doubt sigurado ka certain ka pero kapag meron kang pag pag-aagam-agam no nawawala po yung kasiguruhan na yon no nawawala po yung yung confidence na meron ka, no? Dahil ngayon, meron ka na ngayong agam-aga, meron ka na ngayong uncertainty, no? So, uh, nawawala yung yung, uh, nawawala yung iyong, uh, yung sure-footedness mo, no? Because meron kang doubt. So, it is uncertainty about truth or the reality of spiritual things. Ito ay pag-aagam-agam sa mga salita ng Diyos na tinuturuan niya tayong sumunod sa Kanya at magtiwala. Okay? Kaya po mga kapatid, sinasabi po sa Philippians chapter 4, ang dapat po natin pinagkakaabalahan sa ating mga kaisipan, sabi po ron, unang-una po sa lahat, whatever things that are true. Think about such things, no? Nagkakaroon din tayo ng uncertainty tungkol po saan, ano? Nagkakaroon tayo ng uncertainty, for example, meron kang uncertainty tungkol sa asawa mo. Uncertainty. Nagkakaroon ka ng doubt. Nagkakaroon ka ng uncertainty tungkol saan, ano? Sa trabaho mo, ano? Nagkakaroon ka ng uncertainty tungkol sa kaibigan mo, ano? Nagkakaroon ka ng uncertainty tungkol sa kapatiran mo. Ano po? So, meron ka mga pag-agam-agam na totoo ba talaga yan? Nang iniisip mo na yan? ba? O, yan ay mga flaming arrows ng kaaway na hindi mo dapat ito ine-entertain. Okay? These uncertainties because they're not True. All right, they're not true. Now, we can also see this uncertainty happening, no, sa mga bagay na uh, tinuturo ng Panginoon sa atin o doon sa mga steps of faith na nagawa natin. And then, naiisip po natin, ano, no, naiisip natin na uh, tama ba itong, tama ba itong uh, ginawa kong pagsunod na ito sa Panginoon? No? So, meron kang, ito na, no, hindi ka na uh, solid. Nagkakaroon ka na ngayon ng pag-aagam-agam kung ikaw ay tama dun sa ginawa mong pagsunod na yon sa Panginoon. Ano? And lahat po ng ito, kini-question po nito ang word ni Lord. No? Kini-question po nito ang kanyang katapatan, ang kanyang pong kabutihan po sa mga buhay po natin, ang kanyang kabutihan. No? So, in other words, what Satan was trying to do here was uh, to question Eve. Is that really from God? No? Yun po ang style ng kaaway, eh, no? pag may pagpaagam-agam po tayo. Sa Diyos pa talaga yan? Yan pa talaga yung gusto ng Panginoon na ipagawa sa'yo? No? Yan ba talaga yung, is it really what God means when He said that? No? So, He began by creating doubt in the mind of His victim. No? So, Satan shoots a dart into Eve's heart to question ano, the 
truthfulness of God's word. So, my dear friends, when those thoughts begin to rise in your mind, si Lord ba talaga yan? No? Yan ba talaga yung ibig sabihin ng Diyos? Si Lord ba talaga galing yan? Sinabi niya ba talaga yan? No? Maging ano na po tayo, maging alert na po talaga tayo. Pag nagkaroon na po tayo ng ano, certain, ba, nakaka-experience na tayo ng uncertainty, meron na tayong doubt, no? Mga kapatid, yun po ay flaming arrow. No? Mag-ingat na po tayo. Hindi po natin ito dapat mag-entertain. Uh, so, we should right away use the shield of faith. Now, the second one is the flaming arrow of denial. No? Uh, mahusay po yung kaaway natin. Ano? So, pagkatapos niyo pong matanong si Eve ng ganoon, when Eve replies, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it lest you die. No? So, yun yung sabi ni Eve. Na, alam natin, hindi na siya accurate kasi nadagdagan na yung words ng Lord dun sa pagkakaintindi ni Eve. Now, ang sagot po ni Satan kay Eve ay ito. Satan simply denies the truth. Ang sagot ni Satan ay ito. You will not surely die. Alright? You will not surely die. He says, and this is a clear contradiction of God's word. So, paano po ito nangyayari sa atin? Ano? So, ito yung sasabihin ni Satan sa iyo, sa, isi sa isipan mo. So, pag meron ka ng ano, pag-aagam-agam, may may ito na yung susunod, no? Kasalanan ba talaga yan? No? Is that really sinful? Is that really wrong? Meron bang mali? Nagawin mo yan? Okay? No? So, yun po yun eh, no? So, meron bang mali? Hindi naman mali yan. Hindi naman yan, ano? Hindi naman yan kasalanan. No? Masyado ka lang namang, ano? Masyado ka lang legalistic. Alright? Hindi naman yan, ano? Hindi naman yan makakasama sa'yo. Alright? That is Satan trying to deny what God's word has said. Alright? That is Satan trying to deny what God's word has said. And my dear friends, that's very, very, very dangerous. Alright? Now, usually, ito po sa mga, ano, mga white lies. No? Ano ba naman yung magsinungaling ka ng kaunti? Diba? Ano ba naman yung mag- justify ka or mag reason out ka and all those things no now the third one is the flaming arrow of deceit deceit is a deliberate intention to make people believe things that are not true so very bad ang deceit because it is malicious no it is malicious you are deliberately uh, you are deliberately Deceiving others to make them believe something that you know for a fact is false, you know for a fact is not true, no? So, niloloko mo yung tao, dinideceive mo siya, no? And, and hindi mo yun makikita na niloloko ka ng satanas kasi nga, deceit nga eh, no? Deceit meaning, hindi mo mapapansin na it is false, no? Because it is packaged in such a way na na appealing or attractive, no? So, uh, yun ang sabi ngayon. Tingnan nyo po yung deceit ni en ng enemy ni Eve kay Eve. Satan sends his most poisonous dart into the heart of Eve when he says, God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, that is really, really deceit. Okay, that's really, really deceit. It is the devil version of truth. Ulitin ko po, ano, sabi niya kay Eve, after niyang idena yung truth na hindi nakamamatay yung pag-disobey sa Panginoon, ano po yung sinabi niya? Nagbigay na siya ngayon ng version niya ng truth. Sabi niya, God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, in this, in this sentence, Ano yung deception ni Satanas? Una, that God is keeping a good thing from Eve. Na merong ipinagkakait ang Diyos. No? Kay Eva. Meron siyang ipinagkakait. Sabi niya, God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open. No? So, meron siyang ipinapagdamot. Meron siyang ayaw ubigay. No? 
And my dear friends, that is deception. If right now you're beginning to feel that way, na it is it feels as if God is withholding something from your life, something from your heart, no? Something that you will enjoy and you feel na God is unfair, no? But ako walang ganun, no? Bakit ako hindi ganun? And all those things, no? Bakit ako ayaw kong bigyan ni Lord ng ganito? No? Ano po yun? It's deception, ano? Because it, it, we start to think na may pinapagdamot ang Panginoon sa atin. Ano po po yung deception na yun? Ito po. Ini-imply po ni Satanas kay Eve na si Eve po ay bulag. No? Bakit sabi rito, no? Uh, sabi rito, in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open. No? So ang implication nun po para kay Eva is that niloloko ako ng Diyos, hindi ko pala nakikita yung yung totoo, no? Hindi ko pala nakikita ano pala ako ngayon, no? Para ako nasa isang illusion, no? So that's what Satan is trying to tell Eve, no? Na kumbaga para pala ako nasa isang matrix, para pala ako nasa isang ano virtual reality, hindi pala ito totoo, no? All this time God is sheltering me, you know, all this time God is uh, treating me like a little child na wala akong alam, you know? Alam niyo po 'yon, no? And we begin to think thoughts like that against God, no? We begin to think na, na uh, there is something wrong, no? There is something wrong when there, there is absolutely nothing wrong, no? My dear friends, right now, you probably begin to think you have many, many problems. You have many, many problems. When the truth is, those problems we have just simply created in our minds, hindi pa nagkakatotoo yung mga problema yun. But we've made things very complicated already. Kasi ang dami na pong napuntahan ng isip natin. Okay? Marami na siyang nagawang mga scenarios in our minds when hindi pa naman yung totoong nangyayari. Alright? The other de uh, devil version of truth is this. That Eve will be like God and God doesn't want that. No? Definitely evil. No? Na deception is that binigay niya itong uh, uh, thought, no? A selfish, uh, ambitious, no? Uh, mindset in the mind of in, in Eve that she can be like God, knowing good from evil, and God doesn't want that to happen. No? So all of these things, my dear friends, are flaming arrows that you and I experience, no? Every day, and we need to be aware when those flaming arrows are attacking, you no, know, are attacking us, and we should be ready to, you no, know, put up the shield of faith, or else, pag tinamaan tayo kapati nitong mga bagay na ito, magiiwan yan ng lason sa puso mo, magiiwan yan ng lason sa isipan mo, di mo na papansin na kakaapekto to sa lahat ng yung ginagawa. All right, so kailangan po talaga yung shield of faith. Now. I want to share this with you, no? I, so I got this from Desiring God. Alam niyo po, sa Old Testament, hindi po unusual na ginagamit nila yung word na shield. Pero alam niyo po, every time they would use the word shield, it always refers to the Lord. It always refers to God. For example, in Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, sabi po ng Diyos kay Abraham, The Lord tells Abraham, I am your shield, your reward shall be very great. In Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5, God is a shield to those who take refuge in Him. The purpose po kasi mga kapatid ng isang shield, sa Tagalog ang ibig sabihin nito ay kalasag. Ang purpose nito is for protection. No? When, this is the first line of defense. When you cover yourself with shield, with a shield, no? you are protecting the, the whole body. You are protecting yourself. No? So that's why it's a first line of defense. And mga kapatid, we need to hide in the Lord under His wings. No? He is our shield. Faith in itself is not the one that can protect us. Faith in itself. No, no it is faith in God. It is faith in God and in His power, in His care in his love that is what the one that protects a christian from the flaming arrows of the evil one it is the one that will extinguish those flaming arrows no it is god it is god now sabi po dito uh, oh 
All right. I'd like to read to you Hebrews chapter 11, verses 13. Because in the Bible, my dear friends, when people live by faith, no? when people live by faith, when they use the shield of faith, you know that they are able to accomplish great things for God. No? So instead of the enemy trying to derail you, to distract you, to no, to stop you, no, to uh, to make you preoccupied with all those these certain things, or you can you cannot move on. What the enemy does, no, uh, I, what the Lord does is that when you use the shield of faith, you are able to, no, move swiftly, no, into the purposes, no, of God. So Hebrews eleven says, by faith the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. So you imagine Rahab, no? She was a prostitute, but God gave her a new leaf. God gave her a new chapter, a new life, no? And she even became one of the ancestors of our Lord Jesus. And what more shall I say? I don't have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. But these people, even though they were persecuted, tortured, they were killed, they stood firm. All right? They stood firm. They held fast to their faith. They held fast to the to the Lord's will for their lives. They were established in God's plan for their lives, no? They held fast to what God has held them in the first place, no? Hinawakan na sila ng Diyos simula at simula pa lang at ito yung nag, at hinawakan din nila ito sa kanilang mga buhay. So mga kapatid, paano po kaya tayo mag-grow sa ating faith, no? Paano po kaya tayo mag-grow? There is uh, of course, we all know the importance of of uh, filling ourselves with truth. We mentioned this already last week, uh, last meeting. No, there is the importance of of meditating on God's word, reading God's word, and of course, memorizing God's words. So that meron po tayong no, meron tayong stock ng mga salita ng Diyos sa puso natin, no? His word we have hidden in our heart so that any time, no? So that any time, nandun yung mga salita ng Diyos. But how do we strengthen our faith? My dear friends, we strengthen our faith by applying it, okay? It is one thing to know the promises of the Lord, but it is another thing to live it out. It is another thing to really take a risk and see God at work. So, I like how it's uh, explained by one pastor. Sabi niya, it's like exercise, no? Yung muscles natin, hindi natin ito mapapalakas, hindi natin ito pang mapapafirm, no? Hindi natin ito mapapalaki, no? Kapag yung mong muscles natin ay hindi naman po natin ito ina-exercise. So, ganun din po. To strengthen the faith, we need to exercise the faith. I like how a Christian said it. Ano po? Ang pangalan po nitong Christian na to ay si K.P. Johanna na ano po sa I think Gospel for Asia po. Sabi niya, every moment of every day is a time for faith. Alright? Tapos ang sabi po niya, living a life of faith is like putting your life on gear. Alright? It is like putting your life on gear. If your life is on neutral mode, hindi ka gumagalaw, hindi ka umaandar. But when your life is on first gear, second gear, no, no, first gear pa nga lang, no, umaandar ka na. 
second year, umaandar ka pa lalo, no? and tuloy-tuloy po yun. Now mga kapatid, kapag we exercise and apply faith, it means our spiritual walk with God is actually moving. No? It is actually moving. May nangyayari. It is moving forward. No? Bakit kasi meron pong exercise of faith? Real faith isn't afraid to take a risk. It puts us in places where we can see God in action. So let that faith be alive and active instead of dead. So when there are flaming arrows of the evil one, friends, what do we do? Put up the shield of faith. Meaning, run to God. Run to his word. Run to his promises. Alright? Kaagad-agad, no? magtago po tayo sa Diyos. Siya ang atin po kalasag. Kaagad-agad, iwagayway po natin kung gaano kadakila at kapangyarihan ng Diyos. No? Kaagad-agad, no? gamitin po natin ang kanyang mga salita at ito po ang magsilbing kasiguruhan po natin at assurance po natin ano, na kung ano po ang tama sa mata ng Diyos, kung ano po ang totoo sa mata ng Diyos, kung ano po ang righteous and true in God's eyes. No? So, let us use the shield of faith. No? So, if right now you are already doing God's will for your life, no? if right now you are already doing God's will for your life, keep on doing it. No? Keep on living it out. Keep on memorizing and reminding yourself of promises that come from God's word. No? So every time there is doubt, uncertainty, no? doon pala nagsisimula yun eh. No? Balikan mo na agad-agad kapatid yung mga salita ng Diyos. No? At yun ay yung paniwalaan at yakapin na ito yung totoo dahil it is God who said these words and we take his word as is. Now, my dear friends, ngayon pong gabi ay mananalangin po tayo for our country and for our churches. I'd like us to just remember the exhortation of the Apostle Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. We will be praying for our government. We will be praying for our leaders. No? Siguro, we are well aware of the news that is happening right now. Okay, and uh, regardless, my dear brethren, of your uh, preferences, opinions, or leanings, no, when it comes to uh, stuff like politics, no, let us always remember we're Christians. We're Christians, which means ano po, that our standard of behavior is always the righteousness of God. No? And we really ought to pray for our government. No? We really ought to pray for our government because God put our government, God has assi assigned a government so that it would rule righteously. No? It would rule righteously. No? So when a government uh, uh, rules through politics, no? friends, it will really have a very sore effect no, sa mga tao po. And that is why kailangan natin magdasal. Kailangan natin magdasal. Kasi syempre mga ano po eh, this is an earthly world, a, a earthly kingdom. No? So, kailangan kailangan po natin mag-wage warfare sa heavenlies. The Bible says, First of all, then I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgiving be made on behalf of all men for kings and all who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Righteous governance would lead to a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. And the ultimate effect of that, of course, is that there will be the spread of the gospel, no? Tayo po ay lumapit sa Panginoon. Ipanalangin po natin ang ating pong bansa. Especially our uh, leaders. Let's come before Him that they will stand in righteousness and they will not uh, advance their personal agenda 
Let's come before the Lord. Panginoon, kami po ay lumalapit po sa inyo. Lord, kaawaan niyo po ang aming pong bansa, Panginoon. Kaawaan niyo po ang aming mga leaders, Lord. Dalangin po namin, Panginoon, sa inyo na ang aming mga leaders magsimula sa aming pong presidente, Panginoon, ay inyo pong kakatagpuin, kahit inyo pong i-convict, Panginoon. Bigyan niyo po sila ng fear, O oh God, na huwag po nilang i- isulong ang kanila pong personal uh, agenda, ang kanilang personal preferences, Lord sa pagpapatakbo, Panginoon, na aming bansa, Panginoon, at sa mga affairs po na nangyayari po sa aming kalagitnaan, Panginoon. Dalangin po namin, Panginoon, na sila po ay inigard nyo po nila po kayo, Panginoong Diyos, ang inyong um, kabanalan, ang inyong pong katuwiran, Panginoong Diyos, sa kanilang pong pag-rule dito po sa aming country, Lord. We pray, O Lord, that you will, Lord, um, Panginoon, convict them, Lord. Help them, O Lord, to see what is right and what is good for our country, Panginoon. Uh, Lord, that they will set aside their own preferences, their their, Panginoon, their personal feelings, Lord. Dalangin po namin, Panginoon, na uh, you will indeed, O oh Lord, uh, put upon their hearts, yes, Lord. Lord, the, Panginoon, the desire to follow what your will, to follow, O oh Lord, what is good and what is pleasing, O oh Lord, before you. And we know, Lord, that when they, when they do this, Lord, kag sila po ay... Panginoon, magiging effective na mga leaders, Panginoong Diyos. Dalangin po namin, Panginoon, na Lord, uh, sila po ay tumawag po sa inyo, Panginoon. Dalangin po namin na sila po, Lord, ay, ay isang alang-alang, Panginoon, ang inyong kalaoban, Panginoong Diyos, sa mga decisions na kanilang ginagawa, Panginoon, at gagawin. Dalangin po namin, Panginoon, na patuloy nyo nga lamang pong uh, i-cleanse, Panginoon, ang sistema ng aming pong gobyerno, Panginoong Diyos. Most especially now, Panginoon, na sobrang mapolitika, Panginoon yes, Diyos. Sobrang polarization, Panginoon, ng mga tao, Panginoon. Na hindi na po nakikita ang, ang mga maling ginagawa, Panginoon, ng aming mga pinuno, Panginoon. Uh, dahil po sa kanila pong Lord, fanat- fanaticism, Lord, sa, sa kanila pong pin- pinininindigan na party, Lord. Dalangin po namin, Panginoon, na Panginoong Diyos, tulungan niyo po kami, Lord. Mas lalong lalo na kami mga Kristiyano, Panginoon. Dalangin po namin, Panginoon, sa inyo na lagi namin maisipin, Panginoon, yes, that we are not only citizens of this world, but we're not on, uh, uh, anymore citizens of this world, but we are citizens of heaven, that you will help us, O Lord, to always uh, put in regard, Panginoon, ang aming pong pagiging Kristiyano, Panginoon, pagiging, pagiging anak ninyo, Panginoong Diyos, na kami po ay hindi mo makahit, makahit, makihalubilo, Panginoon, sa mga political, Lord, uh, discussions or arguments, Panginoong Diyos, that we will always stand, O God, in what is right and what is holy before you, O God, what is pleasing to you, Lord, that we will live our lives, O God, bearing the burden for, of our country, Panginoon, in prayer, O Lord, and that we will not, Lord, a source of, uh, of, uh, of Panginoon, of uh, disunity and fueling, Lord, arguments, Panginoon, about who's right and what is who's wrong, Lord. You are the only one who's right. You are the only one who's holy. You are the one who's only who's the only one who's righteous. And we pray, O oh Lord, ganito po ang maging standard po namin, Panginoon. Tulungan niyo po kami, Panginoong Diyos, that we will be able, O oh God, to control, O oh Lord, ourselves, Lord, most especially in the social media, Panginoon, na hindi po kami, Panginoon, tumulad, Panginoon, sa mga tao po na hindi mana ng palataya, Panginoon. Tulungan niyo po kami, Panginoong Diyos, that we will be filled with wisdom. We, you, you will fill us, O God, with self-control, Panginoon. And grant us, O Lord, the, your favor, Panginoong Diyos. At dalangin lamang po namin na maging, patuloy kami maging ilaw at Panginoon asin, Panginoon, sa mundong ito, Panginoon. Even, Lord, sa aming pong mga pamilya, Panginoong Diyos. Dalangin po namin, Panginoon, that this will be the opportune time for us, O Lord, to really uh, be a salt and light, Panginoon, in our, in our families and in wherever we are, Panginoong Diyos, wherever saan po kami makarating, virtually man ito, Panginoon, or physically man, Panginoon, tulungan niyo po kami, Panginoon. Dalangin po namin na kayo po patuloy ang pumilos sa aming mga puso. At dalangin din po namin patuloy ang aming pong mga leaders, Lord, sa kanila pong mga desisyon na gagawin, Panginoon, sa darating na May 15, Lord. Dalangin po namin na bigyan niyo po sila ng karunungan at uh, sa alang, alang-alang din po nila, Panginoon, na katatayuan ng aming mga kababayan, Panginoon, ng lahat po, Panginoong Diyos, na, na naapektuhan itong quarantine na ito, Panginoon. Dalangin po namin na tutulungan niyo po sila, Panginoon, what is, whatever is beneficial, whatever is effective, whatever would uh, advance or for, move forward, Panginoon, our, our country, our, our 
municipalities, our cities, Lord. Tulungan niyo po, Panginoon, aming mga, mga mayors, Lord, mga governors, Panginoon, mga barangay captains, Lord. At patuloy nga lamang, Panginoon, na, na palakasin niyo po, Panginoon, ang resolve ng aming mga frontliners. At patuloy lamang po, Panginoon, na uh, gamitin niyo po sila, Panginoon, at patuloy lamang, Panginoon, na kilusan niyo ang kanila mga puso sa kanila pong Panginoon, pag-abot sa mga mga tao na nangailangan na kanila pong tulong, Panginoon. And we pray, O oh Lord, for those who are infected, Lord, that you will continue to heal them, Lord. We pray for your healing, O oh God, upon them, Lord. Dalangin po namin, Panginoon, na sila po ay tumawag po sa inyo at gamitin niyo po itong opportunity na ito upang sila po ay makakilala po, Panginoon, sa inyong pangalan, Panginoon. Maraming salamat po, Panginoon. Father in heaven, maraming pong salamat muli, Lord God, sa peace na binibigay niya po sa amin, Lord, na sa kabila ng lahat, Panginoon, ng Lord, ng mga tribulations, O oh Lord, na amin pong, Lord, pinapagdaanan po ngayon, O oh Jesus, na sa amin po kayo, O oh Lord, na sa amin po, Panginoon, ang uh, inyo pong kapayapaan. At marami pong salamat, Lord, sa inyong salita ngayong umaga na pinapaalala niyo sa amin, O oh Lord, na Lord, kaya po namin, Panginoon, O oh Lord God. Kaya po namin through you, O oh Lord, through your power, O oh Lord God, na, Lord, na panagumpayan, Panginoon, ang mga flaming arrows ng kaaway, Panginoon, O oh Lord, doubts, deception, denials of your word, O oh Lord God. Father God, and we pray, Lord, that you will strengthen our faith, we will Lord, put ourselves, O oh Lord God, Lord, in the shelter, in the protection of our God who is our shield. Father in heaven, we pray, Lord, for this, at this time, but pray po natin, mga kapatid, um, uh, ating pong uh, syudad sa oras po na ito. Let's pray for Bagyo. And italangin po natin sa Panginoon, specifically yung magiging uh, steps na gagawin po ng ating pong local government, specific, uh, particularly our mayor, lalong-lalo na po dun sa area po ng pagbabalik po ng mga Baguio returning residents. Father God, ina-offer po namin sa inyo, Lord, ang Lord, ang aming pong pinuno dito po sa Baguio, Panginoon, si Mayor Magalong, Panginoon, at ang lahat po ng kanya pong mga katuwang, Panginoon, sa paggawa ng mga plano sa paghahanda ng aming pong city, Lord, sa pagbabalik po ng mga Baguio residents, Lord, who have been stranded, who were stranded, Panginoon, sa ibang mga lugar at mga probinsya. And tulungan po ninyo, Panginoon, O Lord, na ang lahat po ng ito ay mailagay sa sa ayos, makapagplano po ng maayos, Panginoon, at bigyan niyo po kami ng unity, Lord, at ng pagtitiwala lamang, Panginoon, sa mga, Lord, sa mga programs na ito, Panginoon, O oh Lord. We pray, Lord, for perseverance and patience sa puso po ng mga kababayan po namin, Lord, na stranded sila at di pa po sila makaakyat dito sa Baguio, Lord God. And we pray, Lord, na, na sa lalong madaling panahon, Panginoon, sana ay makauwi na rin po sila dito sa Baguio, Panginoon. And Lord, kahit po yung pong mga kababayan po namin na sila rin ay stranded dito at kailangan na rin nilang makababa, Panginoon. We also pray, Lord God, na you will grant them Grace, O oh Lord God, to wait and grant them the grace, O oh Lord, in your favor, Lord, na makauwi na rin po sa kanilang mga sarili-sariling mga tahanan. Tulungan niyo lamang po kami sa mga oras na ito, Panginoon, O oh Lord God. Please grant, O oh Lord, our leaders, Lord, your wisdom on how to, Lord, on how to plan everything, O oh God. Please grant our leaders, Lord, Father God, sound judgment, Lord. We pray that you will help them administer justice. You will help them administer peace and order. Oh, Lord, you will help them, oh, Lord God, Panginoon, uh, Panginoon, to see the big picture, oh, Lord, and yet at the same time, Lord, makita nila, Lord God, yung pong ibang mga, Lord, mga uh, implications, Lord, na mga decisions po na gagawin po nila. 
Lord, we are limited in our scope of knowledge. And thus we ask you, we pray to you, Father God, for your grace and for your help, Lord, upon our leaders, O Lord God. Strengthen them, Lord. We still continue to pray that you will grant them good health. You will grant them strength so that they can serve, O Lord God. Oh, Lord God, our country. And most of all, we pray, Father God, na sila po, Panginoon, ay makakilala po sa inyo. Sila po, Lord God, ay maligtas ang kanilang mga kaluluwa. Oh, Lord. For they too, Lord God, need the salvation of Jesus Christ. Salamat po, Panginoon. Sa oras na ito, mga kapatid, pag-pray po natin ang ating pong, uh, mga church. Kung tayo po ay mga taga Gospel of Grace, let's take time to pray for our church. Kung tayo naman po ay taga ibang church, let's take time to pray for our own churches. So I will be leading in prayer for our church here in Gospel of Grace. Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praises, Lord, for sustaining, O Lord, Father God, your church, O Lord, here in Baguio. We thank you and praise you, O God, for your strengthen for strengthening each one for favoring each one with good health oh lord we thank you and praise you oh lord god for for graciously providing for every household's needs oh lord god we thank you most of all oh lord for the spiritual strength that you lord you shower us with oh lord god oh lord every day so that we will be sustained in our walk with you at patuloy po namin dinadalangin, Panginoon, na gamitin po ninyo, Panginoon, ang Gospel of Grace Community Church, Panginoon, for your glory and your glory alone. Use, O Lord God, every brother, every sister, Lord God, every member of this church hanggang sa aming po mga little children, Panginoon, O Lord God, upang, Panginoon, ang mga buhay po namin ay magbigay ng kapurihan sa inyo pong pangalan, O Lord God. May... We, O oh Lord God, continue to grow deeper in love, Lord, with you. May we continue to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of Christ. We pray, Father God, na lumalag po kami, Panginoon, lalo pa po sa aming pong faith at pagkakakilala po sa inyo, Panginoon. Pagpalain niyo po ang aming mga kapatiran, Panginoon, na lalo pa po nila kayong makilala at sila'y tumibay sa kanilang pananampalataya. Nawa ang pang. Lord, ang plano niyo po lamang, Panginoon, ang magkaroon po ng katuparan, Panginoon, O Lord, sa inyo pong iglesia. Marami pong salamat, Panginoon. Thank you. Thank you, Father God. Let us end with a song. Let us sing this song to the Lord.
magwakas po tayo sa panalangin. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Father God. Your word says, God is my refuge. God is my strength. God is an ever-present help in trouble. Father, thank you, O Lord. Father God, at kung meron po kami, Panginoon, na mga kapatiran sa mga oras na ito, O Lord God, Panginoon na nangangamba, Panginoon, nagkakaroon po ng mga pag-aagam-agam, Panginoon, ng katakutan sa kanilang mga puso, Panginoon. Father God, we pray, Lord God, that you will help our hearts, O Lord, to put our faith in you, dear Lord. Help us, O Lord, Father God, to put our faith in our God who is our shield, O Lord. To put our faith in our God, O Lord, who is our protector, our tower, our stronghold, deliverer, O Lord God. Hallelujah, O Lord, and we thank you, we praise you, O God. Panginoon, O Lord God, sa mga salita po ninyo, reminding us that if God is for us, who can be against us? We thank you for the joy of our salvation, O Lord, for the peace that surpasses all understanding. Oh Lord, once again, Lord, you have renewed us tonight. You have restored us. You've strengthened us, oh Lord God. We thank you. We praise you. You are our joy. You are our confidence, oh Lord God. You are, oh Lord, the light of our hearts, oh God. Maraming maraming pong salamat sa gabi pong ito. Sa inyo po namin maingat na ino-offer pong muli, Panginoon, ang lahat ng ginagawa ninyo sa aming mga puso at mga buhay. Sa inyo namin, Panginoon, ino-offer pong muli ang lahat ng papapuri at pagpapasalamat at ang kaduwalalian. Matangin kayo lamang, Panginoon, ang tunay na karapat-dapat. Sa matamis po na pangalan ng inyong anak na si Jesus, aming Panginoon na tagapagligtas. This is our prayer. Amen.